Besides the quarterback, there's no position in the NFL right now with more depth and more elite players than defensive tackle. And these guys are raising the bar. Oh, yeah, they're more than just run stuffers now. We're seeing guys record double-digit sack totals. It's insane. We also saw it in the NFL draft this year. Defensive tackle was by far the most potent position in the 2016 class. But this list is about interior linemen. I'm including nose tackles as well. But my top 10 is fully comprised of 4-3 defensive tackles. Entering his third season, I have Aaron Donald as the top-ranked interior lineman in the NFL. And with a great nucleus around him along the defensive line, the undersized 3 technique won't have to worry about being double-teamed as much as others do. He had 11 sacks a year ago after posting 9 during 2014 when he won the Defensive Rookie of the Year. Donald uses his 6-1 frame to get really low and that low center of gravity makes it extremely difficult for opposing linemen to get their hands underneath his pads. His first step quickness is top notch and also has the flexibility to dip and bend. His technique is absolutely impeccable. In the run game, his quickness and great use of leverage helps him get guards and centers turned. He's great at stuffing the inside run. Donald has such a high football IQ that he can read what's going on and then uses great agility to react and make the tackle. Geno Adkins is number two, and he's a guy that's been the top dog on prior lists before tearing his ACL midway through the 2013 season. They say it takes at least two years to return to form following these type of injuries, and he was back to being an animal in 2015, so he's back near the top of my list. Adkins has a great first step and unparalleled quickness, something we quite frankly haven't seen until last year, at least the last couple years we haven't seen it. He also plays with a lot of power and leverage. Opposing linemen rarely get under his pads. As a run stuffer, Adkins plays with great instincts. He uses his lower body strength to his advantage. He always knows when to time his disengagement from a lineman and then go and make the tackle. Dominican Sue is the third ranked interior lineman on my list. Sue still hasn't been able to match his career-high sack total of 10 during his rookie season, but notching six for a defensive tackle is nothing to scoff at, even though I, I thought last year he didn't really play up to his abilities, at least not his elite abilities. He's the quickest off the snap of any defensive tackle in the league, and if your blocker doesn't have elite recovery speed, you can forget about stopping him. And not only can he beat you with his quickness off the snap, his immense power allows him to push the pocket. You've got to double-team him every single snap. If there is one thing that Sue's learned since his impressive rookie campaign, it's patience and awareness, especially in run defense. He would get upfield so quickly that opposing offenses would use this against him, but he's grown a lot more keen since. Fletcher Cox is number four, finally got that $100 million contract he deserved, although his play is still underappreciated from the national landscape. And now, he gets to play his more natural position under Jim Schwartz after being a 3-4 defensive end under Chip Kelly. In Schwartz's system, Cox's role is simple. Get after the quarterback, create havoc, and force negative plays. With a unique blend of size, quickness, power, and t technique, Cox has the potential to post double-digit sack totals for the entire duration of his contract. In the running game, Cox has the speed and burst and uses his long arms to slice through gaps. He's very strong and converts that speed to power using his violent hands. He keeps a wide base and drops anchor effectively when challenged at the point of attack. I've got Kawan Short at number 5. He broke out in 2014, but broke out even further in 2015, putting up a ridiculous 11 sacks. He has a lot of strength and uses it to his advantage when bull rushing. He converts speed to power to drive guards and centers backwards. And playing in front of Luke Keekley, Short paved the way for him by absorbing blocks. In the run game, he can line up in a gap or head on and make plays. Once again, his power really comes in handy. If he does have a weakness... He has to do a little bit of a better job diagnosing play action. Gerald McCoy is number six on my list at 6'4", 295 pounds. McCoy is a bit taller than most three techniques, but his pass rushing ability is incredible. He has great length, size, quickness, body control, great power in his hands, and a high motor. He plays a great technique and natural leverage. It's amazing how much pressure he gets on the quarterback, considering the lack of disruption McCoy got from Tampa Bay's outside rushers. If McCoy does have a weakness in his game, it's when teams run at him, but when they don't, 
he can penetrate into the backfield. He's not known as a player who has a mean streak, which is something you'd like to see out of a defensive tackle. The exceptional interior linemen just keep on coming. Marcel Darius checks in at number 7. He posted 10 sacks two years ago, which was outstanding, considering how much he's asked to take on blockers to free up outside rushers. He's a long-arm power player who is impossible to keep blocked. He's a great bull rusher due to his upper body strength and is quicker than you'd think for a 320-pounder to close in on the quarterback. In run defense, Darius is great at splitting gaps and finding the ball carrier. He also has the power to anchor down and bring down running backs with just one arm as he's still engaged with a lineman. Damon Harrison is number eight, got paid a ton during the offseason to help out the defensive line for the Giants. He was an upper echelon nose tackle for the Jets, despite being undrafted in 2012. At 6'4", 350 pounds, Harrison is ridiculously strong to go along with very long arms, and it helps him keep blockers off of him. He disrupts the line of scrimmage, clogs the middle. He's simply immovable. He really is. Harrison may not tally a bunch of sacks, but he can collapse the pocket using a bull rush to create opportunities for his teammates. The underrated Dan Williams is number nine on my list. He's pretty much a one-trick pony as a pass rusher, using a powerful bull rush to collapse the pocket, but he's more known as being a run stuffer. He's one of the best in the game. He's able to anchor, and when the ball carrier comes close by, he's able to disengage, throw the lineman away, and make tackles. His short area burst is remarkable for a man his size as well. Sharif Floyd rounds out my top 10. This is a guy who took a couple years to develop, but he shined since Mike Zimmer arrived in Minnesota, and become the head coach. His improvement in technique has helped him dominate opposing linemen. He has great quickness off the ball. He's also equally adept stopping the run, using his hands exceptionally well. Other guys on my list, there's Lidval Joseph at number 11, Michael Brockers at number 12, Tyrone Crawford at number 16, and Jonathan Hankins at number 18. Joseph and Floyd form a powerful defensive tackle tandem in Minnesota. Joseph is a beast in the run game. At 290 pounds, Crawford is one of the lighter defensive tackles in the league, but makes up for it with quickness and agility. Hankins broke out in 2014 and was a top 10 interior lineman on my list last year, but wasn't as great a year ago. I want to see him regain that 2014 form. He plays with a lot of power, has a quick first step. There's two defensive tackles I really like in Atlanta. I have Rashid Hageman at 27, Greedy Jarrett at 34. If there's a guy who I can see make the biggest jump this year into my rankings next year, it's Hageman. And Jarrett comes off a very, very impressive rookie campaign. As for the Eagles, Cox cracked my top five, and Benny Logan makes it into my top 20. He played as a read and react nose tackle during the Chip Kelly era, but like Cox, Logan is back to his more natural position. Playing alongside Cox, I believe Logan has the potential to dominate this season, but it's unfortunate because he's a free agent at the end of the year. Howie, you better get it done, pal. Just get it done. That's all I got to say about that. All right, so that's my interior lineman list. Let me know via Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, whatever realm you're watching this on. Let me know in the comment section below who is in your top five, who's in your top ten, who's underrated, who's overrated. Let me know. I'm Adrian Fedhue. I'm out. Later.